Peace be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. We are gathered in God's house today to hear his word, to sing his praises. Mr. Brindle and the praise band will be leading us this morning. We come into God's house to offer our prayers and petitions before him. But I invite the uh, praise team to lead us in the singing of our first song, In Christ Alone. Continue with our worship to gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do good, O Lord, to those who hold fast to your name and to those upright in heart. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evil doers. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. O Lord, have mercy upon us, poor, miserable sinners. We have offended you in thought, word, and deed. We have sinned against our neighbor. Spare us, O God, who confess our sins to you and hide our, not our faults from your eyes. Restore the penitent and forgive us all our sins. According to the promise of your mercy, 
revealed to us in Jesus Christ our Lord, as he suffered and died to cover our sins, cover us with his righteousness, and grant us grace that today and every day we live upright, sober, and godly lives to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus our Savior, you have been made children of God in baptism and live because of his mercy. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we turn our attention to the scripture for today. The Old Testament reading is from the book of, book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. Out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth, it was not because you were more in number than other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the land of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to, to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to, who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angel nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. 
who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. It will be, so it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, Grace Alone. Join our hearts in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you as you gather your people in your house to worship your holy name. You create, you preserve, you send us your Son to die on the cross. And by your power, you raised him on the third day. The Holy Spirit has been sent to teach us the truth 
Thank you, O Lord, for leading us to faith, strengthening our walk of faith till we stand before you in eternity. And especially at this moment, may the words of this mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. It always feels good to be chosen, to be picked, to be picked out of the crowd. As a grade schooler, I had trouble walking and chewing gum at the same time. So consequently, when teams were picked, I came to realize that some unlucky team was going to get me last. And I just kind of, okay, that's, what's, that's the way it's going to be. I'm going to be kind of picked last. We're chosen on all different levels. My parents chose me, chose to love me, till the day they died. My wife of 49 years has chosen to love me. And she still chooses to speak to me on a regular basis. We have so many relationships that last for a long time. Some of them are short, but some that last a lifetime. And when that lifetime of one individual ends, we still have those memories. Oftentimes, we don't need a photograph but that can really perk something up. We chose each other. We were chosen. Now, what if someone chose you to be special before you were even born? What if someone did everything possible to bring you into a relationship with him? Or her? What if someone gave you all the means for that relationship to continue to grow and mature? What if someone promised to make that relationship not only last for a lifetime, but for eternity? That what if is answered in God, our loving God, our loving God that has loved us with a foreknowledge that only he could have, the witness of the Spirit given in his word is sure to us. Our Lord remarks about it at the end of the gospel lesson, that you and I, like every wise person, do this, we bring out the treasure that is new and the treasure that is old. It is by God's grace, the announcement in Deuteronomy to the people of old. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. And then the Apostle Paul brings us, it's a little newer message, by a couple of hundred years. For those whom he, that is God, foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. Predestined to be called called to be justified, justified to be glorified. God has always had a plan for you to call you out of darkness into his marvelous light, to quote another scripture. And we make plans, we set agendas, we go on Google, Expedia and plan that vacation. Oops. There's always been times of uncertainty. There have always been times of unrest. 
there have always been times of confusion. But usually what is right in front of us is the most pressing. I don't remember Pearl Harbor, but I remember sitting in that freshman math class at Concordia High School in Milwaukee and having a knock, heard a knock on the door that uh, someone from the office and the teacher were talking very quietly together and we were informed that President Kennedy had been assassinated. I remember the towers. I remember various riots, people being confused about this disease and that disease. Is there anyone can, that can help us regain our sanity? I can yammer on for hours. You know, that's always the dangerous thing to ask a pastor. Pastor, will you say a few words? We are not conditioned to say a few words. So let's go to God's word. Again from Romans chapter 8. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We have, it's important when our normals are changed. I've become to detest various phrases, though they are, <clears throat> I'm not going to say hate, detest, dislike, the new normal. I don't want the new normal. But that has stepped into our life. The plans to see grandchildren in May in Colorado, that was gone. Thank God we had a chance to see them at Christmas. Wow. Work has been disrupted. Some are still without their regular employment. Some are underemployed. I like to put it this way, I love baseball, just absolutely love it. But I'd like to make a comment. A tree fell in the forest this week and nobody heard it. Major League Baseball started. Okay. We might have 10,000 people in Lambeau Field this fall. I shrug. Our relationships have been stretched, haven't they? The people we normally speak to, the smiling faces that we normally see, or the scowling faces. Pastor Meyer said, you didn't see me sticking my tongue out at he was here Thursday night. And we smiled at each other. I said, I'm smiling at you. And he said, I'm sticking my tongue out at you. Of course, that's our relationship, Pastor Meyer and myself. But anyway, our relationships are stretched. Those of you who are called upon to work in care facilities have seen individuals who have not seen their relatives for months because of restrictions. We sit separated within our churches. I have too much time on my hand and I, I check the videos from congregations across the country. And you're actually seated much closer than some of them are. Congregations that would worship normally a thousand, twelve hundred on a weekend are worshiping six hundred because of restrictions and perhaps honest or whatever fear. Let's go back to the core question as the Apostle Paul places it before us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Bottom line, boys and girls, 
Ladies and gentlemen, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You look at that list. That's a nasty list. That's a life list. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. Clicks off all the tragedies and difficulties that may come to us in this life. Fit into each one as we will. But then he doesn't let up, as I mentioned to Mr. Reinel before, the Spirit lit a fire under the Apostle for Romans chapter 8, because he keeps it going. You thought those were something? Neither death nor life, angels or rulers, principalities, what is in the present or what is to come, any powers, height, depth, anything in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're bound to Christ by the will and action of the Almighty God. He knew there would be brokenness that would need to be healed not with the wave of a magic wand by somebody in a castle, but by the shedding of, his, of the blood of his very own son on a cross and the raising of that stone-cold body on the third day for our life. Our relationship in faith and our faith is begun, begun by the power of God through his mighty word in the waters of baptism. That relationship is maintained to this day by the encouraging of the Holy Spirit through his mighty word and the celebration, the remembrance of our Lord's death and resurrection and his, with his body and blood in Holy Communion. We have been surrounded by distress and confusion but we need to bring out the old and the new. Remember who you are through Christ Jesus. From the days of old, you are a people holy to the Lord. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. May the Spirit continue to guide and strengthen you until that day we stand before him in glory. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. Crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures in ascending to the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life 
the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The offerings will be brought forward as the praise band sings the offertory. We are blessed as we are gathered in God's house to bring the offerings for ministry before us. We are blessed to share the ministry of music this morning. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Rhino. We stand as we take our prayers to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, your love once created all things and set apart a people of your promise. Grant us to us faith that we believe your word, heed the call of your love, and find peace in your gift of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Blessed Father, your love is our great treasure, and your kingdom your gift. Grant that we with bold voice make known your salvation to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, you established your church and endowed her with your word and your sacraments. Bless all pastors and missionaries as they serve us in your name with your gifts and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Mighty God, you have set over us leaders who exercise the authority of the state for our protection against enemies and for justice against evildoers. Bless our President, the Congress of these United States, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, your Son was wounded for our transgressions. In his wounds are healing and strength. Hear us on behalf of all the sick, those who suffer, the grieving, and the dying. Grant them all that is needed to support them in their hour of need. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, you have given us the gift of work and the privilege of using the fruits of our labors for the support of our families and ourselves. Give us a generous heart that we give aid to the poor and honor to you with the worship of our hearts and the tithes and offerings of our hands. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Father, your Son has set his table before us and offers to us his flesh as our food and his blood as our drink. Give us hearts of faith and fill us with, with repentance that we receive from him we keep faithfully until that day when we, all, we join all your saints to rejoice in your presence on high. Lord, in your mercy. Look with mercy upon us, Heavenly Father, in our various needs, those individuals who are, are shut in facilities at, right now and in their homes and unable to, to get out and unable to, oftentimes to be ministered to. We pray especially for Jerry and Paula and others that you would continue to bring healing upon them. We pray those, for those who are defenseless at this time, citizens on the streets of our nations, of our nation, those who find themselves uh, victims, for those who, the unborn, who cannot defend themselves. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would look down with your mercy in your strong hand. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we command ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Lord, mighty God, you have loved us from of old and prepared us for the day when the hope of salvation would be fulfilled. You kept this hope alive by the prophets and on the day you appointed, you delivered up your own Son in our flesh to be our Savior and Redeemer. By his suffering, he paid the price of sin. By his death, he destroyed death. At his resurrection, he showed forth his victory. And in his ascension to your right hand, he pleads for us still. On the day that you have set, he will come again in glory to bring us to himself in eternity until that day, guide us, guard us as the people of your own possession, and nourish us with the holy body and precious blood of our Savior, according to his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Remembering your mercy and rejoicing in your grace and favor, we pray you, Heavenly Father, to sustain your people in hope until that day when your kingdom will no more be divided by time and space. When at, at last the eternal day dawns, grant that reunited with the saints who went before us for the sign of faith, who dwell in your eternal presence forevermore. According to our Savior's word and example, hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in the true faith to life everlasting. Go in his peace and continue to serve him. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, you have richly fed us the holy gifts of Christ's body and blood in his, in his bread, in this bread and wine. Keep us by your Spirit's power that we may depart may not depart from Christ, but be brought into the eternal joy of your kingdom and into the blessed reunion of the saints before your glorious presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for announcements this morning. Yellow sheet, yellow sheet, yellow sheet. Take it home, take it home, take it home. Pass the word on. Uh, we have the online views that may be various different ways. Um, let your friends and neighbors know that we are live uh, on Facebook and YouTube and three times on the TV. Uh, last announcement for, I, I have no further announcements. Uh, Chantel. So I just wanted to share with everyone that we did receive word from Pastor Neville that he is declining our call. Um, and I do have his letter that I can share with you. I'll go ahead and read that to the congregation. Um, Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please again extend my thanks to the members of Trinity Lutheran Church for the honor they showed me by extending me their divine call to serve them as their pastor, the under shepherd of our, good she of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. I thank them also for their prayers as they have asked for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to determine how best to serve God's people there at Trinity and here at St. John's. I appreciate the honest conversations that I had with you and the other leaders at Trinity. After prayerful consideration, asking for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I am led to return the call to Trinity and to remain a senior pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Redbud. The conditions in our culture and the needs of the near future here at St. John's will require consistent pastoral care. I trust that our Lord does have in his plan the pastor that will provide the care God's people at Trinity need as they move into their future. May God bless and keep you and the people of Trinity in his grace and mercy as you continue in the call process. I will keep you in my prayer. In Jesus' name, Reverend Mark Allen Neville. In a, in a few minutes, the uh, candles will be extinguished and we will join in, uh, in the uh, singing of our hymn of departure. I think it is appropriate now then to plead with Almighty God on be our behalf. Um, I, I said this uh, Thursday night, it is not improper to be selfish in our prayers. It is not improper to pray for God's blessing to be poured out upon each of us individually and in this congregation. Remember, you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, the Lord who loved you. You're in my prayers each day. I get to see some of your smiling faces through this process, but it is good for us. And maybe let's just, let's take just a moment. Heavenly Father, look down on this precious people whom you have called to be this congregation. Grant them the strength of the presence and the reality of your spirit to move forward, the courage not to have a spirit of timidity, but your power, your love, and your self-discipline. Grant them your presence, 
and their, your knowledge in their decisions as they move forward. In Jesus Christ, amen. We, we join in the singing of the hymn of departure. <laughs>